Hey, my friends, how you doing? Kevin, the comic doctor, coming to you with another edition of What's in the Press for this week, November, what, the 17th? Wow, this month is just flying by, and the comics keep piling in, <laughs> but I'm getting through them. I'm getting through them one comic at a time, my friends, and I'm so glad you could jo join in today because, uh, you know what, a lot of really, really nice Silver Age and Bronze Age books. And some modern books also thrown in for spice. I know that a lot of you are fans of the Silver Age and Bronze Age uh, stuff. But um, let me uh, welcome any new subscribers. Hello and welcome. This is the show, my friends, where I go over many of the comic books that I work on week after week. Submitted to me oftentimes by you, uh, my amazing clients. And um, this week, I, maybe I pulled too many. I don't know. Hopefully the video won't go too, too long. But you know what? Sit back, relax. I am going to start off with uh, Robert's books. And Robert comes to us from Woodbridge, Ontario. And Robert has also been waiting patiently for his books to finally get worked on. And Robert, the time is now, my friend. So let's have a look at some of Robert's books. I'm trying to make some room here for these. Let me uh, actually, one second. I want to get another bin. Uh, you know what? Don't worry. I'm, I'm okay. All right. Let's just get started with these books here. So first off, Robert sends us a nice copy. Actually, a really nice copy of Amazing Spider-Man 300 with the first appearance of Venom. Then we have a really nice copy of Avengers 196. First Taskmaster. A copy of X-Men 129. The first appearance of Kitty Pride. Hulk 340, just a famous, uh, famous cover. The first appearance of the Thunderbolts in uh, Hulk 449. Lots of talk about the Thunderbolts uh, in the MCU. Uh, they're not giving us too much information, mostly speculation and mostly people guessing the Thunderbolts are coming. They've hinted at it with, you know, General Ross being in a whole bunch of the movies and. Uh, you know, Helena Belova and um, other characters, but we'll see. We will see. And I'm sure if there's a Thunderbolts movie, that book will pop even more than it already has. A uh, nice copy of Wolverine number one. A Thundercats number one. Spider Man number one, a gold edition. A really nice, these are really nice copies, actually. Robert, you got some nice books here, my friend. A very good eye. Amazing Spot, or sorry, not Amazing Spider-Man. Secret Wars, number eight, featuring the first appearance of the black suit. The symbiote. Symbiote. Tomato, tomato. Uh, 298, Amazing Spider-Man. And a 299. To go along with that really nice copy of 300. Wow, really nice copy of Amazing Spider-Man 316, another newsstand edition. I've seen about five newsstand editions in the last couple of weeks. Now, one came back, a 9-8, which was really, really sweet. A really nice copy of Transformers number one. This is a Canadian price variant. And back to the Canadian price variants, because I am trying to figure out the best way to bring people on here. To interview because I've got so many ideas uh, of people that I'd like to bring on the show, uh, probably more on the one-on-one -on -one show, to talk to you about you know things like Canadian price variants. Um, you know I have a very close friend here locally that is really into uh, comic book comic book original art, and and to talk about that because those are those are areas that comic collectors are I think interested in but oftentimes don't know much about. And these two fellas. That I have one for Canadian variants, one one guy for doing the uh, the uh, original art would be able to shed a lot of light on those topics for us. So I'm I'm working on that, my friends. Okay. Well, anyways, thanks so much. Oh, I'm not done. Robert also submits a copy of oh, this one's all sealed up. Sorry. A Batman 139, and also a copy of. Wolverine number 198, it's signed by Stan, it's a cool looking book, but he'd like it upgraded to a new slab. Alright, well thanks again Robert for your submission, and again thank you so much for your patience. These books will be worked on uh, over the next few days, and hopefully off to CGC 
by the latest end of next week, early the week after. Okay, so next we're going to have a look at a smaller order. And this one comes to us from Gus out of Toronto. And let me just, this is a nice one here, guys. This is a big book. One sec here. Not that these, all these books are really nice, I think. What do you think? After this one, we'll go to the chat and see what you guys are what you guys are saying. So first off, Gus submits you know a classic copy of uh, Journey to Mystery One Twelve, classic Thor Hulk combo cover, really nice cover. And then I told you it was a small order. Gus also submits a copy of the first appearance of Loki in a Journey into Mystery Eighty Five. So we'll clean that baby up and get that sent off to CGC Peronto. Thank you so much for your submission, Gus. Let me just put these here so as not to lose them. I'll put them right over there. Next, let's have a look. Oh, actually, let's go out. Let's go over to the uh, chat room and see what's going. Let's see who's here today. Uh, I saw a lot of people coming in. Let's trans transition over. Hello, guys. Let's see. Oh wow, lots of lots of comments. Hopefully, <laughs> let's let's go to the beginning. Oh, Jim's here. How are you doing? Jim, you're the first one here. To congratulations. Dennis Mason. Ah, Dennis came, comes to us today from Fully Articulated. I saw you over there, Dennis. Thanks for look, looking up the channel and sticking around. And sorry I was late, guys. I was a little bit I'm trying to get all these uh, lights organized. I, I kind of lost track of time. But Dennis says, I stopped buying comics in the year. They went to 25 cents, way beyond my budget. Yeah, now it's like five bucks a book. Well, I can afford, I can afford one streaming service. Well, which one is that? Netflix? Amazon Prime? So the Silver Age was my era. Superman hypnotizing himself in the mirror will not feel the pain of kryptonite. Interesting. So you remember, I remember seeing that one. I let my brother buy the comics. He always knew how to put 12 cents together. I wonder how it was back then to put 12 cents together. Was that hard to do? I, it probably was. Um, and believe me, kids, post-war poverty was intense. I, there you go. Post-World War II, of course. I'm not going to ask you how old you are, Dennis. That's not that's not uh, polite. Um, uh, oh, God, not another, not another old timer with 10,000 stories from the Silver Age. More cannabis. Be right back. Well, go and enjoy yourself. Uh, what about the RMB? He knows how to share an ancient concept. Robert Meyer Burnett. That's right. Oh, Dennis continues. This is like uh, writing on a chalkboard. Right where? Is this live? It will be. Oh, there's Marty. How you doing, Marty? Good to see you. There we go. Yeah, human run, it sure is. Kyle, finally made it to a live one. Hi, Kyle, how you doing? I saw your books today. They're not up yet, but I saw. I just kind of flipped by them, and I said, oh, Kyle's coming up pretty soon. Jim Sandy's from New Mexico, that's right. Uh, I love NM, New Mexico. That, that's cool. What's the Bronze Age in numbers? Oh, help him out, guy. What is the Bronze Age in numbers? Is that 19, like, 79... Or, or, or is that, yeah, is it 1976 on to like 1984 or something like that? I'm not even sure. Uh, basement Collect, hey, 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 Jordan, how you doing, bud? Good to see you. My kazoo was sold in 97. Mike Lemons here, how you doing? Great Basement Collectible. I saw your video about turnaround times at CGC. Yes, it's looking better. I, I still think, guys, by, and remember, they say they're caught up, but they're not caught up with all their books, right? They're caught up, they're caught up, in the receiving section. Basically, when a box has come in, they're not sitting and receiving for three, four, five months. Well, it wasn't for five months, but three months for sure. Uh, that's done. They're they're now the book the book the, the books the boxes when the boxes arrive, they're they're not staying in the receiving department for too long. They're actually being opened pretty quick. So that's what they're talking about. So to me, it's one thing at a time. Once they get the receiving under control, then hopefully that's going to translate over to the grading departments, and we can start seeing some of those books moving. Because yeah, man, it's been the turnaround times are way too long. Uh, nice books. Hey, doing Dark Horse. Good to see you. Dennis, again, my brother had most of these comics. Oh, really? Colin Smith, X-Men 129, First Kitty Pride, and Emma Frost. Sorry, Colin. Thanks for correcting me. Uh, my mom threw uh, them out when they were worth three mil <laughs> million. <laughs> Everyone has those stories, right? Everyone has those stories of their my mom threw them out. Uh, you know, my mom let me keep a lot of my stuff, but there are things that have gone missing. In particular, my Mego soup, my, my Mego, uh, what do you call it? My... Um, Oh, uh, not, not my Mego, you know, eight inch, but the, the, the other ones, the smaller ones, the pocket heroes. I have one wonder woman. That's it. I had the whole collection. No idea what they, what, what happened to those G garage sale garbage. I have no idea. 
<laughs> Dark Horse, your mom owes your brother $3 million, exactly. Basement Collectibles, Jordan, I saw your, a pre-screen with the same turnaround. Yeah, my, my pre-screens were in and out within two weeks. Uh, I sent in pre-screens two weeks ago. They'll all be back this Friday. By the way, two more boxes on the way back as we speak. We'll be here on Friday. Great covers, yes. They were beautiful. Wait, wait to see what else I've got, Dennis, today. Nice to see another Hulk 449. Secret Wars, Wayne, yes. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Dennis, she is doing her best to make amends, Dark Horse. Uh, what, else, what else we have here? Mike Lemon. It's okay, basement. Everyone puts the extra D. I don't know why, but it always happens. Ah, you're talking about your name there. Uh, let's see here. Batgirl, that's right. First Batgirl in the Golden Age. Wayne, I haven't seen it yet, but it's all I'll need. Whoop, I just lost my, uh, I just lost the, there it is, back again. Who else we have here today? David Ross, how you doing, my friend? Uh, Dark Horse, you should have kept the 3M worth of books. Sam, if you're ta if you're talking original art, that's my territory. Sam, interesting, because, uh, yeah, I want to bring Jeff in. He's really knowledgeable. But again, I have to figure out a way, I have done, uh, interviews on this platform I'm using using zoom and it looks like garbage so I want to subscribe to a uh, to a streaming service that offers easy you know interview like you know dual you know I can have two or three people on at one time and uh, then I'll start bringing some guests on I have someone at CGC who's offered to come in and talk to us as well and I'm dying to get them on here as well so I'm working on it guys I'm working on it uh well what else we have here malice 911 how you doing thanks for coming by and I just lost that. There it is. Like the newsstand editions, Canadian variants are even rarer. That's all you need to know. Smaller demographic of people in Canada, less issues made, even less survive. That is true. But there's so much to know about Canadian variants. And uh, my friend Angelo from Quebec is an expert. He even has a website, a price, he's a, he's a Canadian variant price guide. It's free, I believe, online. And, that, and Angelo is one of the guys who actually runs it and organizes. So go check that out. Hey, Eric, how you doing, my man? Good to see you. Uh, Peter was mean, making fun of Doc Ock. Oh, you're talking about the, now you're talking about the, the uh, what do you call it? The, um, the trailer. Maybe we'll talk about that a little later. Okay, let's, let's go back to looking at some comic books. How about that, guys? There's lots to still go through. Okay, so next, we got Chris Curtis, who has some more amazing books. Check these babies out. Look at these. Now, these are nice. First off, we have a copy of Fantastic 449. A nice copy of FF50. One of my favorite covers, Batman and Robin 232, first Ra's al Ghul. Whoop, whoop, there we go. Try to tilt it proper for you guys. Anybody want a first Black Panther? Well, here you go. Fantastic 452. I haven't seen this book in a while, actually. First Black Panther. Nice copy. And I, I need these two. These two are books. I think I'm going to finally do it. I'm going to start rustling up the first 20 issues of Amazing Spider-Man. And look at these babies right here. Amazing Spider-Man number three. First Doc Ock. Just in time for that trailer you were just talking about. And that's a nice looking book right there. After a press, this is going to look really nice. And one of my favorite ASM covers, Electro, number nine. Also, also in that trailer we just saw. So really nice books you got here, Curtis. Thank you for your submission. These babies will be off to CGC sometime next week. And many will come back very fast. These are some big books in there, so they'll come really fast. So another small order uh, from... From... Uh, Tony out of Oshawa. And by the way, Tony will be at the, um, well, I guess I, I might as well tell you this right now. This Friday, mark it on your calendars. Instagram claim sale. Uh, I'll be having an Instagram claim sale over at the shop. <clears throat> now, whether or not I'm going to sell, I'm still on the fence, guys. I'll, I'll organize it. I'll run it. I'll help the guys out. But we're going to have books from Roy's Paper Heroes. We're going to have books from Blade Man Steve. Out of Peterborough, we call him Blade Man because he likes to make his own knives, just like that show, Forge and Fire. He does that, so he calls himself the Blade Man. 
Uh, <laughs> and anyways, he's got lots of great books, uh, high grade books. And also Tony Iedzi uh, is coming in. He's also a local dude. And these are his books I'm going to show you right now. These are not for sale at the claim sale, but Tony has, will be bringing, I think, 50 golden age slabs. So if you like golden age books, you want to come to this claim sale this Friday night. 7 p.m. on my Instagram uh, chat on my Instagram page. All you gotta do is go over to Instagram and follow me on Instagram. When I go live, you just click on my name and you'll be you'll have access to the sale. Now, guys, we've done this is our third Instagram claim sale. We haven't had one in about two months, and you know I might start doing them on YouTube. I just I haven't done it there here yet, so I, I probably. I might do it later, but for now, just going to keep it simple and keep it on Instagram. But there should be a lot of great books. Come on out uh, on Friday night if you are not busy. Okay, let's look at some of Tony's books. Queen of the Teens, Genie, number 14. Right there. That's a book you don't see all the time. Tony also submits a copy of Fantastic Four, 45. First appearance of the Inhumans. Will we ever get the Inhumans back? I don't know. And Tony also submits, look, a lot of big books this week, guys. Hulk number six. six. Incredible Hulk number six. And a nice copy of that as well, too. All right, Tony, thanks for your submission. These babies will be going through this week. Again, Tony submits his own books to CGC, so these will be going right back to Tony, and he will do all the dirty work. All right. Uh... Yeah, we got a big, this this one's a huge order from Alex out of Toronto. And Alex always submits such nice books, key books usually. So I think you're going to really enjoy these ones, guys. Um, oh, wow. Well, maybe we should, well, let's, let's look at some of these books first. Then we'll go back to the chat at the end. All right. Well, you know what? I'll take a break somewhere in between these. These are, there's a lot of books here. Uh, I'm going to put them in here, actually, when I'm done with them. Okay, here we go. Now, Alex is the guy who loves to give me little post-it notes, to give me notes on what to look for in the book, which, which is great, you know? I, I always inspect the books carefully before I press them, and clean them, that is. And But but nonetheless, uh, Alex likes to give me... He, he investigates the books himself first, and then he makes little notes for me, which is great. And you know what, guys? It's not a bad idea to inspect your books before you submit them to your presser because sometimes you'll find things uh, in the book that you didn't know was there. Uh, the other day, or the other day, I got an, uh, an email from a guy who was interested in one of the books from that collection I bought. I opened it up, I looked through it, and sure enough, there was a you know a little advert clipped out, right? So it's good to look through your books before you send them. You never know uh, what you might find in the books. Anyways, let's can, let's go ahead with this one. This one here is. Fantastic Four King Size Special 5. Really nice. I, I love this artwork from this time period. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, beautiful stuff. All right. We then have a... And these are in no particular order. We got an X-Men 19. Mimic. We move over to Thor 134. This book has been heating up as well. Lots of Silver Age this week. If Henry's out there, he'll be happy because Henry likes his, his Silver Age books. Great copy of Submariner number five with the first Tiger Shark. Love this one too. Tales of Suspense number 58. Classic Iron Man cap cover. Another Tales of Suspense, number 59, with an Iron Man and Cap cover. Very cool, very cool. And I think these are all pretty much Silver Age books. I could have swore I had a modern lot, too. I guess I don't. Oh, well. That's okay. Tales to Astonish, 52. Pretty cool. Black Knight in that one. Strange Tales, uh, number 135. Nick Fury. Oh, there's a couple of modern books in here too. Amazing Spider-Man 210 featuring Madam Web. There was talk of a Madam Web cartoon, I thought. And that kind of just kind of... Kind of went away. Amazing Spider-Man 145. An awesome cover. And... 
I like this. Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, come on. 129. The first Punisher. And Alex says, spruce it up if possible. It's possible. I'll make it look nicer. It'll look a lot nicer. It's it's pretty rough, but it'll look nicer. Amazing Spider-Man, 17, early. That's probably the second appearance of the Green Goblin, I think. Green Lantern, number 40. Alan Scott meets Hal Jordan. One DC book, I think, out of all, all the lot so far. Fantastic Four, number 15. Avengers, number 28. Wow. Fantastic Four, number 67. First appearance of him, which will later become Warlock. Fantastic Four, 27, right there, nice, She-Hulk, number one, Fantasy Masterpieces, The Silver Surfer, Number three, this is a reprint of Mephisto's first appearance. And these fantasy masterpieces are starting to heat up too. I had a number one in a 9.8. I shouldn't have sold it so cheap. I did, but it start, they're starting to pop in value as well. Even these second print books are starting to really show some value. So before you think, oh, it's just a reprint, I'll blow it out or just get rid of it or not, you know, not grade it, have a look first. And by the way, these are all, again, going to CGC. But again, just, just, uh, just like... Um, Tony, Alex sends his own books to CGC as well. He does all the dirty work. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man. Sorry, Incredible Hulk, 271. I'm getting tired, guys. Here we go. Whoop, right there. First Rocket Raccoon in comics. Creatures on the Loose, featuring the Man-Wolf. Number 30. That's a pretty sick-looking cover. Black Panther, number one. I'm going to move that over a little bit. I don't like how it's kind of off there. There we go. There we go. That's a nice copy as well. And an amazing Spider-Man, number 265, first Silver Sable. And another copy of Amazing Spider-Man, 10 and guess what this is not all of alex's books there's another bin right here but before we get to that bin let me see what the heck you guys are talking about i gotta differentiate between um i gotta differentiate between your own conversations and questions you might have for me let's see here yeah i'm glad you guys are having conversations with each. let me just kind of skim through it let me go back to where i was all right i was about there wayne's there how you doing wayne i think i said hi already but if i did not how you doing no ASM 361s today, my friend. Not one at all. Uh, Dennis. Okay, yeah, we talked about the comics. Brouhaha. Hey, all. Hey, doing, Brew? Good to see you. All uh, right. Uh, let's see here. Kevin, what do you think of the new Spidey trailer? Wow. I liked it. I liked it. Now, we only have five of the villains, so there's obviously going to be a sixth villain. Who's that going to be? Is it going to be Mysterio? Is it going to be um, a new a character we haven't seen yet, like a Craven the Hunter or uh, you know Rhino or somebody like that? Who knows? But I would think that if they're going to go to the trouble of having all these villains there, they won't have just five. They're going to have the six. They're just holding back on who that sixth villain is going to be. Uh, I also think... People were comparing, you know how MJ was kind of falling down there at the end of the Statue of Liberty? They were comparing that. My daughter was talking about this. They were comparing it to the Gwen Stacy fall in uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So if you watched my video a couple days back, I mentioned uh, my thoughts that Gwen Stacy might come back. I still think she's going to come back. I don't know if she'll come back as Gwen Stacy. I don't know if she'll come back as... 
uh, Spider Gwen or what have you, but I got a feeling we're going to see her or hear from her or something. And I do think the two uh, other Spider-Men are in it. I think it's going to be a bonkers movie and I cannot wait. So yeah, I liked it. I liked it. And it, they didn't give us too much, but uh, I did like it. What did you think? Let me know in the comment section below. What did you all think of the of the uh, new Spider-Man tra trailer that just dropped last night? Um, what else we got? Dennis. Da, 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 like new standard issue. We already talked about that. One book looks like it has been trimmed during the mystery Loki. Uh, I, I don't know. I have to look at it closely. I have not inspected it yet, but I will certainly look at it closely when I get there, Colin. If, if it is, you've got a hell of a good eye noticing that just over the, over the you know, webcam like that. Um, hey, peeps. Hey, VP. How's it going? Marco, how you doing, buddy? Luke's here too. How you doing, Luke? Netflix. Yep, me too. Dennis, I have Netflix. I have them all. Jamie not. How you doing? <laughs> and what does Jamie ask? Has any ASM 361s? And just like I said to Wayne, not a one. Not a one. Not yet anyways. One of the rarest Canadian and most expensive price variants is, is ASM 238. Yeah, it is reaching stupid prices. I have an ASM 238 Canadian price variant in a 9-0, and I think it's worth like 1500 bucks. I think. And I have another one I have to get graded still. So yeah, it, that book in a 9-8 is like three, close to four grand, I think. It's nuts. Um uh 69 ah you're young dennis 69 years young only five a asm 361 so far <laughs> it's a slow night uh born in 53 basically what's going on vp all right everyone's talking to each other that's fantastic uh all right marco collect is Coletta is oh 71 to 81 he's saying is the bronze age or the bronze age so there you go uh I'm trying to see. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, it just jumped. It jumped. Is this dude named Kevin? Are you talking about me? Yes, my name is Kevin, the comic doctor. That's me. How do you... Oh, and Michael asks a question. Oh, wait. First, Michael says, This Friday, Instagram's claim sale, Kevin Shop, Roy's, Blade Man, Tony, the local. That's right. Um... Now, he asks also, how do you pay at the claim sale? Um, essentially, uh, each person is going to have their own, uh, I guess, PayPal account. I'm going to probably set, do it in sections. Last time, it was kind of a free-for-all. But this time, I'll go like an hour to Tony, an hour to Roy, an hour to uh, Steve. And if I need some time, I'll take it. And then each section will have its own email. And each person takes care of mailing them. You'll have their, their Instagram handle you can just contact them via instagram for your for your invoice and you deal with them directly um and we'll see how that goes and a claim sale eddie basically a claim sale is you go online with us and you know we'll be we'll have a variety of books for sale and i'll say for example hey guys I got an avengers number 28 here it's a nice copy five bucks first person to claim it's yours and then whoever says claim they take the book Imagine that for five bucks. I'd take that for five bucks. But that's essentially what a claim sale is. So come on by, Eddie, if you have a chance on Friday night at seven o'clock on my Instagram page. And my Instagram handle is at comic doc. At comic doc. Doc. It's the blue comic doc. Some I have a few different Instagram handles. You want to go to the main one, the blue one. Uh, at comic doc. That's it. All right. Um, Eddie D, instead of an auction, the prices are fixed. Yeah, but we take offers. We do take offers. Kyle H, you just say claim when you see the book. Okay, you guys are helping him out. That's very nice of you. Uh, Kevin, keep your lightsaber away from this book. It's flammable. It sure is. Cheetos and comics. Or Coke and comics. Eh? Yeah, I know. I don't keep my book. Well, the books are right here, but I'm not going to drop my pot. Nothing over here, so. Um... Any news on your ASM 129? It is being graded today, Luke. It is being graded right now. So I hope it'll hopefully be done tomorrow and or, or at the latest Friday, and I can call and get the grade. Uh, man, I, I, we'll see. I'll let you guys know when I, when I find out. I want to see Action Comics, please. I don't have any Action Comics today, I don't think. I don't think I have any Action Comics. I don't see Action Comics very often, Dennis, to be honest. A lot of Batman. As you just saw, it's mostly Marvel. And as most people here can probably attest to, those are the kind, those are the books I, I seem to get the most. I'll get like 90% Marvel, you know, 5% DC and 5% other. And that's probably, 
It's probably even more than that. It's probably like 93% Marvel, okay? Uh, Marvel is hot. And as for action comics, I don't see a heck of a lot of action comics, unfortunately. Uh, Sam, nice to see some Green Lantern great as it is. Uh, I'm on the hunt for an ASM 129. Well, I might have one for sale soon, Jordan. I might have one for sale. We'll see what it comes back at. Uh, base, uh, Marty, base, you can buy mine. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mar Mar Marty has one too. We, we all have one. There you go. Uh, what is, oh, Dennis, what is CGC? Comics Guarantee Company. CGC is a company that grades books. Did you not watch the Robert Meyer Burnett uh, interview? He interviewed me a few weeks ago, or about a week and a half ago, and uh, we went over all of that. CGC is a company uh, that basically takes a comic book and grades it and puts it in a plastic slab with an actual uh, number grade on it. And that's what they do. So when I say CGC, that's what I mean. Uh, thanks, Marty. It might be nice to, to of a grade. I'm on the hunt for a three to match my Hulk 81. Nice. Hey, Real Hyperion. How's it going? Good to see you. Thanks for popping by. Uh, Canadians uh, grabbing cups. Not applicable in tow. Okay, I'm not sure if I follow that. But, oh, not applicable in Toronto. Canadians grabbing cups not applicable in Toronto. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, uh, Sam. Maybe you're talking to someone else. Uh, Jamie. Oh, geez, I just jumped again. Toby and Andrew gonna show. Yeah, they're gonna show up. Of course, they're gonna show up. They gotta show up. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some X Men. I also heard from. An, I can't tell you who told me, but someone told me that She Hulk's gonna show up in this movie. So I think it's gonna be a whole mess of stupidity and craziness. It's a two hour and forty nine minute movie. So it's going to be chock full of lots of cameos. Lots of cameos. Uh, it should be interesting. It should be interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm, too, I'm late to the video. Did you talk about the CGC announcement? CGC announcement? Are you talking about the... If you're talking about the their caught up announcement, we did go over that, yes. If there's another announcement, please speak up. Gwen Stacy clone? Possibly. Poss poss possibly. Gilbert, hey Kevin, watching what's in the press with my stepson. Can you shout out him? Xavier, how's it going, dude? How's it going, Xavier? Thanks for, I know you and uh, Celeste and, and uh, Gilbert watched the show. Thanks for popping by. Gilbert, your your books uh, left for CGC today. They left today, this, this afternoon. So they'll be in sunny Florida this time, probably next week. And then we just got to wait. Um, but I'll tell you, Gilbert, there's a couple of books in there. I had, I, they're not going to go through modern, man. They're, you had it, your ultimate fallout turned out really nice and they're going to bump that. I put it in standard here. They might even bump it to express just to give you a heads up. And even when your, your, uh, your Gwen Stacy book, the, um, the edge of the spider verse, that's a pretty nice book. So I try, they, they wouldn't, I didn't even bother sending them under modern. They won't go through modern. I know. Trust me. I know. That's a good thing. They're good books. Nice books. Uh, Dennis, new villain. Possibly. Possibly a new villain. They could do a new villain, but I think they'll go with somebody old. I, th You know, um, Hobgoblin, maybe? Well, Green Goblin, Hobgoblin. I don't know. Who knows? It's, but they're going to have a... They have to have a sixth villain. Am I, am I crazy in saying this? They're not going to do all, go to the trouble of having all these villains and then not have a Sinister Six, right? So... But I do like the fact that if you watched and you haven't watched the trailer yet, go and check it out. I like the fact that this Spider-Man doesn't want to send them back because if he sends them back, they're going to die, right? Because they all die in their, in, their, in, their, in their respective universes. So he actually wants to save them, which is pretty cool. I like that. Who knows? It's going to be a bonkers film. I can't wait uh, 30 more days or so. Ah. Uh, Gonna buy my tickets as soon as they, they become available. Tomorrow I'm gonna buy tickets to go and see Ghostbusters. That's what I'm gonna see first. I agree, Dennis. I think it was a terrific trailer as well. Michael, obviously this obviously the seventh Spider-Man villain is one of the fans love the most. The big <laughs> the big wheel. Or, or maybe um uh, what's his name? Oh. Oh, what's that guy? Oh. There's been a oh, there's there's a bit of uh, Will, Will, Will o' the Wisp. Remember Will of the Wisp? There's a lot of pretty bad villains, right? A lot of pretty bad villains. Marco, current rumor Emma Stone returning as Spider-Gwen and Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart going to be in Doctor Strange too. Da, ah, I've heard that. I've heard that Hugh Jackman thing too. And I've seen Hugh Jackman in lots of videos at the gym pumping, pumping iron. And so who knows? But I, how could you not bring Emma Stone back? Like she, I think she's probably the most successful actor in all in that, that iteration of Spider-Man, 
her star has grown the most uh, over, you know, Andrew Garfield or whoever else in the movie, right? What a, and, and she's her her she's she's a hot commodity right now. After Cruella and all that, I think she will come back. Either as Gwen Stacy, but even maybe as Spider Gwen. Why the hell not? Why would you not want Emma Stone as Spider Gwen? You know, um, comic doctor. If the if if the top isn't trimmed on the book when it comes back, I owe you a soda. All right, I'll hold you to it, Dennis. Or you? Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa what happened there, Dennis? Or you can send cash. I'll take cash. Spider Gwen, of course. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Marty, Basement Collectibles is not a 9-4 hire. I'll be very disappointed. Well, we'll see what happens, Marty. Uh, why Marvel, Dennis? Because it is just the king. It's been the king for a long time. I mean, guys, all you guys have been collecting for a long time. I mean, I mean, do you, would you not say that even like I'm, I'm 50? Or, uh, you know, when I, my, my time at the comic store was probably 1985 to 1991, 1991. In that time, even at that time, Marvel was the king. Don't get me wrong, DC certainly had a presence, but uh, Marvel, I think, out, has always, for the longest time, outsold um, outsold DC. Also, let's look at the MCU, right? It's it's just a much more structured and successful IP than than the, what DC is doing, and because of that, it seems to be they, they seem to have the, the brunt of the books that are, I see from week to week. Um, Kyle. Thinking he said he's hoping for a seven on that 129. Yeah, I'm hoping for a seven. If I get a seven, I'll be flabbergastedly happy. Is that a word? Flabbergastedly? I'll be flabber, flabbergastedly happy if I get a seven. If I get a 7.5, forget about it. If I get an eight, which I don't believe it'll be an eight, but if I get an eight, get a town. That'd be awesome. Uh, Jamie asks, ever press a 1938 Action Comics number one? No, I have not. The earliest Action Comics I ever pressed, I believe, was a 13. And you got to remember, Superman did not appear on all of the covers, right? Action Comics number one, the famous Superman cover, is obviously the big kahuna. And then after that, there's about, I think, until you get to issue into the late teens, you don't have Superman on, the, on every single cover. So the ones of Superman are obviously worth the most. And number 13 is the famous one with, with the locomotive, I believe. Um, and I did that one. And I think I did a 20, the first Lex Luthor, 20, oh, I can't remember if it's 24 or 29. I forget. But I have done, I've done some. Um, and uh, did I do any Batman early, early tech books? I've done some early tech books. You know, I've done the first Robin um they're they're you know i i you don't see them very often you know I, I do again i do a lot more marvel books than i do i've done all the big marvel books everything when it comes to marvel i've done them all af15 and you know jim 83 tell suspense you know, you know um uh, uh what do you call it 39 all those i've done but uh yeah i've never done an action comics number one this comic business is quite swift oh it's it's swift all right uh, you, uh, let's ooh, just jumped again. What's going on here? Uh, what? It just, just sometimes I, I can see now why when I watch other guys on YouTube, they say the, the comments jump. I can see what they're talking about. It, it kind of jumps. The comments get sifted up and I, I, I lose, uh, my spot. The villain of the holes. What's me and my back. Okay. Where am I? Okay. There we Canadians. Uh, um, me and my bad humor, Dennis. Okay, guys, we're just having fun with each other. That's fine. Can't imagine the moment it will come to me. New villain. Hmm. Villain with the holes. What's his name? Kevin, I was just going to ask when you're going to see Ghostbusters. I think I'm going to see Ghostbusters um, probably Saturday or Sunday. Probably Saturday or Sunday. I don't think it's going to be Friday because, well, I have the sale on Friday, so I can't go Friday night. It start, I'd like to go tomorrow night, but I, I got a feeling it'll be sold out. So probably Saturday or Sunday with the, with the whole family will go. Um, sixth villain would be the Gibbon or the Jackal. The Jackal is a pretty cool villain too. Spider-Man hits the dude in the hole and his fist emerges from behind him, hitting himself in the head. I remember that. Um, could it be Venom? Could Venom be the sixth villain? Like he's not a villain really, but could he be the sixth villain? That's a possibility. They show the lizard. Yeah, lizard was on there. Lizard, 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 Sandman, Doc Ock, 
uh, Goblin, Electro. But it seems that Doc Ock is not a villain. It seems like he's actually talking to them and they're going to... I think Doc Ock is going to be kind of like another mentor to Peter Parker, kind of like uh, a Tony Stark, you know, a tech, a tech science wizard. So we'll see. I kind of like that, actually. That's pretty cool. Uh, in 1960, it was the other way around. Fascinating Marvel explanation. The lizard is still in question. Well, no, he was he was he was in the he was in the actual. I saw him there jumping. He was in there unless they pull him out. Um, in 1960, oh, definitely in 1960, uh, Marvel was still in its infancy, right? Um, and, and definitely DC was on top at that time. You know, Superman, Batman, Justice Justice League. You know, that was later. Actually, it was Marvel's the inception of Marvel that kind of changed DC as well. You see, what happens is. Uh, Marvel comes around, starts introducing these characters and putting teams together. The Justice League was a response to the Avengers, I believe, if I remember, if I, if I know my comic history correctly. So right off the gate, Marvel started selling books and doing really well. And DC wanted to emulate that. So it seems like as soon as Marvel hit the, hit the, hit the, hit the stands, it was, it was an instant success with kids and with readers. And DC then, I think, started trying to play catch up the whole time, right? And of course, DC's got the iconic three you know wonder woman batman and superman they're the they're the iconic characters that are never you know they're they're the first right and uh we're always going to respect that and and the cool characters what have you but but marvel's marvel man they, they they brought they brought the superhero down to earth i think and that's what made them so popular and and so loved by by readers the world needs a real Superman. We sure do. Dennis Mason, the 1960s never happened. It's a complete conspiracy. The government, with their history books, just want you to believe it was real. Maybe. Oh, King Kingpin? That you know what, Luke? Good point. It could be the Kingpin. It could be the Kingpin. And there's been talk of the Kingpin in the Hawkeye series, so you never know. Good point. Um I always suspected that. Good holograms, though. I have a 1942 Look magazine with an original black and white Superman insert. Very rare. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. And great acid. <laughs> Marco Coletta. It's time to add a new ages to the comic canon. We've made, we've been in the modern age since 1991. I agree. I think we need to have like late modern age, early modern age. We, we, we got to do something like that. I agree with you. Dark Horse. HC, your 1500 subscriber announcement broke chat. Broke chat. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'm not sure what that means, Dark Horse, but I'll tell you right now, since I'm here, that I'll continue with, with Alex's books. Yes, 1,500 subscribers. When I hit that milestone, $250 gift certificate for press and cleaning, grading, I don't care, whatever. 250 Canadian dollars, mind you, to your bill. So uh, that's what I have right now, and I may add some more to that. Um, as you know, we get close, it's going to take a while to get there. Obviously guys, you, YouTube is not an easy place to gain subscribers, but I'll certainly, uh, maybe add one or two little perks to that as well. All right. And I feel terrible. I, I have another giveaway to, to do for my Google reviews. I have not done a newsletter in about two and a half months. So I'm going to do one of those hopefully this week. Just only so many hours in a day, guys. But thanks, Dark Horse, for bringing that up. Ghostbusters. I haven't seen a movie since The Avengers, and I will see the Ghostbusters, and so will I. Fantastic Four before... Ve That's right. Thank you very much, Dennis. It was the Fantastic Four before The Avengers. Oh, shit. The Vulture. Yeah, the Vulture. Yeah. You got the Vulture, too. And the Scorpion's in there as well, isn't he? But the Vulture has been... That's, That's right. Yeah, I never even thought of that. Yeah. Michael Keaton, you never, it's, they're holding back some stuff, guys. They're holding back some stuff. And I, I, everyone is saying that this is going to be Spider-Man's exit from the MCU. He's going to leave the MCU proper and go to the Sony-verse. And there will no longer be a Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He'll be the, he'll, he can come back once in a while for a guest spot, but there's not going to be a Spider-Man anymore in the MCU. And I have a hard time believing that. A lot of pundits are saying that's the case. I know John Campia goes on and on about that. I, I have a hard time believing that. I don't see why you can't have two Spider-Men. Two universes, you know. If you have... Uh, if Tobey Maguire or, or um, uh, Andrew Garfield or whoever 
happens to be a Spider-Man and they're still popular, why can't that Spider-Man be the Spider-Man in the Venomverse or in the Morbius universe or wherever? So I don't see why you can't have a Spider-Man over in the Sony universe and another Spider-Man in the MCU. Keep Tom Holland where he is because people seem to like him. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's going to be certainly interesting. I'm very interested to see where the whole Wanda... WandaVision thing comes in as well because I don't really understand how it all ties in. I think she's the villain for the Doctor Strange film, but I think it's still... T- I, th- I was told that it's Spider... It's... um, uh, What are the three movies? Is it just the two movies? I heard like WandaVision was the first part, Spider-Man, No Way Home was the second part, and then the Doctor Strange was the third part of this kind of continuing saga. So inter- interesting to see where it goes. Um... Uh, Vulture is too new. Well, I don't know. No, Vulture's been around for a long time and he was in the last film, right? So, uh, Basement... No, no, he was in, the, was in the last film or the first film? Who was the villain in the first film? Was Vulture the villain, first villain? Yeah, it was Vulture then Mysterio. It could be either one of those guys too. It might be Mysterio. I saw some little... Um, uh, those, those, those Tony Stark floating things around in one of the movie posters. So it could be Mysterio as well, right? Um... I finally picked up a Jack Kirby book with a great cover, Kev. Do you have a favorite Jack Kirby book? Well, all the early stuff, right? Uh, Avengers number one, all the early Avengers books, the FF books, all all that stuff I'm a big fan of. But I also like Kirby's stuff later on, like when he kind of was going into that, into the the celestial world, right? In both, you know, the new gods in the... um, and the DC universe, and as well as you know the Eternals and what have you, in in uh, in the Marvel universe, his his style was so distinct, right? His style and Ditko's style were were very, you know, you see it, you know it, right? And I love that. And and you get guys like Romita who come along, and they they kind of advance it and change it. And also Romita's style was very unique. And then you have other people who try to copy them or emulate them a little bit. I, I hate to say the, the word copy. But are inspired by them, you know. Um, but no, I love Jack Kirby. So yeah, I've got a few of his books back there. I still got to do kind of go through my books and show off what I've got too someday. I will do that at some point. Um, uh, what book did you get, Jordan? Uh, Frank, was that a black suited Spider Man in that trailer? <sighs> I don't know. I was told it was a Doctor Strange version. Like Doctor Strange is supposed to give him a mystical, a mystical um, suit. I don't know. I do agree with with John Campia, the the YouTuber on that. I don't know why they had to give Iron, uh, him Iron Spider's suit. They basically made him Iron Man Junior. When I'm happy with just Spider Man being Spider Man, he doesn't need all the gadgets and gizmos. Just be Spider Man with his web shooters and go, right? So uh, let's see what else here. Free comics right here. Well, maybe Dennis, I might add some of those in. Eddie, okay, gotta say, Obnoxio the Clown is the sixth. <laughs> That'd be interesting. All the way from the uh, X Men universe. Yeah, Keaton is awesome. Shocker, I thought about that as well too, Jamie. Uh, I don't think Shocker is a big enough name, but you never know. I think it's going to be probably, uh, the Vulture kind of makes sense actually, or Mysterio, you know. Uh, or my, my thought of the Hobgoblin maybe. You never know because they're talking about making that kid Hobgoblin. Uh, how many Spider-Men are they there? There's millions of Spider-Men because there's, it's a multiverse, right? But I mean... And we don't know for sure if they're going to even appear in this movie or not, but there's there's rumors that you're going to have the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man from the Sam Raimi films. You're going to have the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man from the Amazing Spider-Man films, and then the Tobey Maguire, the Tobey Maguire, sorry, and the um, Tom Holland Spider-Man from the most recent film. So three, there'll be three Spider-Men if if they go that route. Uh, it's Sony's way of letting the MCU take the Spider-Man that they don't want. And and that's okay if they do that. I just want to keep him where he is. David Ross, I have an early Jack Kirby cover, KO Comics, CGC7 from 45. I think he was 28 years old at the time. That is cool. That is very cool. Rock City Comics, a whole reason Doctor Strange and the multiverse is involved. My hope is that the Spider-Gwen will be the one to survive. And I, I yeah, that, that, that could happen too. It's going to be great. I, I can't wait to see what they... It's going to be shocking, that's for sure. Um, out of the 10 million Kirby books, yeah. They have the rights to Peter Parker Spider-Man so far as I know. Who do, Sony does. Sony has the rights. Sony has the movie rights. 
They have to make a Spider-Man movie every three years or they lose the rights. So they have to have a Spider-Man movie. Um, but when it comes to television and animation, Marvel has the rights. Marvel has the rights. When it comes to film, sorry, when I say anima- TV animation, not movie animation. When it comes to feature films, two-hour length films, it's Sony. But you can see, that's why when you, remember that superhero squad show that used to be on a few years ago, that annoying superhero squad show? You had the whole Marvel universe. You had Spider-Man, Wolverine, X-Men, Fantastic, they were all in it. Because it was a, it was a half hour animated TV series, and Marvel now Disney has the right to do that. Um, but when it comes to the big the big screen, you've got Sony on one side with Spider Man, and the rest of the MCU is over at Disney. The Hulk, the Hulk is also at Disney, but Universal has the the uh, uh, what do you call it the uh, distribution rights. So. That's why you're not seeing another Hulk movie because if, if Disney were to put a Hulk movie together, Universal gets a taste of the action. They get to distribute the film and they see a taste of that. And because of that, uh, Disney or Disney's kind of held back on doing any further um, Hulk movies, which kind of sucks. Uh, senior or Junior Ramita? I like both Ramitas. Ramita Senior and Junior, but Senior's great. Ramita was like, Following his dad's footsteps. I mean, his work's great too, but Ramita Sr. was awesome, man. Uh, Dennis agrees. There's too many gadgets. Basement Collectibles will be posting the video tomorrow. Okay, I'll have a look at that then, Jordan. Thank you. Uh, why don't we get back to these books and we will maybe finish the tra- the uh, the chat off in a second. So Alex also submits more Silver Age stuff with a Strange Tales number 126. A Silver Surfer, number eight. This run is becoming... I'm seeing the, this entire run being submitted all the time now. Here's another DC for you, Dennis. Uh, Showcase presents Dolphin in Showcase 79. A nice early X-Men. X-Men number eight. The Uncanny Threat of Unis. The Untouchable. Another X-Men book, X-Men number 96. There we go. A lot of glare, I apologize. X-Men 97. X-Men 98. Fix that up a little bit. There we go, a little bit better. X-Men 98. Now that thumbnail had Thor versus Hercules and Dirt and King Size Special Annual Number 1. And here it is right here. I've got about five or six copies of this. Nothing, not a high grade one, but I've got many copies. Because I've I've always thought that when Thor's time is up, when Chris Hem- Hemsworth packs it in, I think Hercules is going to be taken over. And there's been talk of that as well, too. And there's been talk of her. I think Zeus is, is going to be appearing in the new uh, Love and Thunder film. And though this is not the Canadian variant, there's, there's a Canadian variant of this book as well. The Canadian variant has a completely white back cover, which is a real pain in the ass to clean. <laughs> but this is not it. This is the American one. Okay. But a nice copy nonetheless. Marvel Tales, number nine, reprints several Marvel classics including the first appearance of the Green Goblin. Marvel Chillers, number three. Tigra, the Werewoman. Another DC book for you there, Dennis, with Omega Man, number three. With the first appearance of Lobo. Oh, look at this, another DC book. Justice League of America, number 21. This book here now is a hot, hot, hot book. Submariner, number one. Everyone's holding on to this book, waiting for that announcement. Strange Tales, 150. Actually, two copies of that. Is that the... uh, I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure who that is. All right, moving right along. We've got, oh, this is the last one. 
Fantastic Four, number 20 with the Molecule Man, right there. So that's all of Alex's books. That's going to take me uh, a bit of time <laughs> to get through all of those. And I've got 25 more of Eddie's Canadian variants to do. And then his Canadian variants are done. And one more box of Angelo's. And those are done. It's never ending, it seems, my friend. It's never, never ending. Lots and lots of comics to, to, to still go through. But I am getting through them as quickly as I can. Let's see who else is here. Uh, Dennis, TV animation, what a concept. Uh, yeah, uh, the, way they, the way they negotiated it. If, if they have three Spider-Men, they can use that to hide his identity again. That's true. They could do that. Uh, very good point. Think Angela's going to come back? Angela. Angela who? Who are we talking about Angela here? Romita Art coming. Nice. It's a joke name, Unis. Unis. Hey, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Newfoundland 424. Don't worry about it. Better late than never, my friend. Uh, David Ross. Dennis, I tripped at Woodstock in 69. <laughs> Never heard of Omega Man except in Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, it's a DC thing. Mike Emmon, JLA 21, the first JLA. Oh, okay. JSA crossover. Love that book. That's, that is a significance. So you guys know a lot more about this than I do sometimes. Nice going, David. I was 15 and too scared to hitchhike to New York. Yeah, I wasn't even born, so I can't even comment on that. Uh, Michael, the one I have is Marvel Comics Group number 183, April 83. It's not from Crazy, although I love them and Mad. I got a bunch of Mad magazines in a collection. I'm gonna, oh, by the way, I did pick up a collection last week. I mentioned just a three-box collection. I'll do some highlights on that maybe tomorrow or the next day. Uh, I was 22, David says. I tripped a California jam in 74. Uh, you, guys are, you guys are going down the memory lane here. Is Spider Woman Angela? Oh, oh, who's the boss? Spawn's Angela, Neil and Marl. That's what I was wondering. I, when I saw Angela, I thought of Spawn's Angela. Mark Coletta, Coletta, sorry, Marco Coletta. I know we all want the X Men to make the debut in the MCU, but I hope in, in intro Alpha Flight first, just to, for how silly it would be. Um, you know, if they wanted, to, if they wanted to really uh, do an origin story proper for for Logan, I guess you could start with Alpha Flight. I don't think they will, though. I think they're gonna they're gonna just throw them in, and I and I do think they're gonna put Hugh Jackman in there, and I do think they're gonna put um, what's his name in there as well to uh, uh, Xavier um, Patrick Stewart. I just think Feige, Kevin Feige, has a relationship with all these guys, right? He was involved in the X Men movies. He was involved in. Um, uh, the Spider-Man movie, the original Raimi Spider-Man film. So he's been involved with Marvel for a long time. He knows all these guys, right? And he's had meetings reportedly with all these guys as well, too. So I think he'd love just to give that to the fans. But then where do they go from there, right? So that that's the thing you got to be careful about. Uh, just a three box. It's not, no, three small boxes. But a lot of little goodies in there. Uh, in fact, Dennis might like those because I think there is some action comics in that collection I got. More Batman, but... I will share them. I will share them. How long have we been going here, guys? It's almost an hour. Okay, we're going to finish up in a sec. I have a magazine photo of me uh, at the uh, Cal Jam. Hot oh, sick. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't want to see any naked pictures. I don't want to see them. All right, guys, listen. Let me go over the announcements again before I let you go. First of all, Thank you, thank you to anybody who's new here today who popped by to say hello. Please hit that subscribe button and do leave a comment in the in the comment section below because by doing so, it automatically enters you in a competition when I or a draw, not a competition, but a, a draw to win some pretty cool prizes when I hit my next milestone, which is 1,500 subscribers. Again, you must comment to even have a chance to win. So subscribe, like, and again, please leave a comment. Um, Aside from that, <clears throat> this Friday, the 19th, I'm having a claim, I'm hosting a claim sale over at my shop here in Oshawa. It's a three to four vendor claim sale. I say three to four because I may or may not sell. I might just host it. I'm not sure yet. <clears throat> we'll see. I'll see what I can muster up on Friday. 
but please come there at, at seven o'clock on Instagram. So if you, if you don't have Instagram, download the app, put it on your phone. It takes only a few seconds. Instagram's a pretty cool app. And look for me, The Comic Doctor, and it's at Comic Doc and add me. Once I go live, you should be notified and you can just jump right in and join in the fun. And like I said, acclaim sales, basically the, the prices are fixed. Of course, always open to reasonable offers. If you see something you like, bid on it. Claim it. It'll be yours. Okay. And we will. And of course, it's for all of North America, uh, Canada and the United States. Unfortunately, I don't think the guys are going to want to ship overseas. So if you're from overseas, I apologize, but you can still come by and for fun and have a look at some of the books that are being sold. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else can I tell you? Oh yeah. Um, this is what's in the press. Uh, later on this week, I'm going to have another unboxing probably on Sunday. And uh, if I have time on Friday, maybe I'll do uh, an afternoon uh, showcase of some of the books that were in that collection I picked up uh, a week and a half ago. Again, a small three box collection um, that I got to stop buying collections, guys. So I have nowhere to put them. Anyways, guys, again, thank you so much for popping by. Let me see if anybody else has anything to say before I take off. Uh, as far as oh, 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 I was pelted with, <laughs> I was pelted with garbage for twenty minutes until I lost it. Uh, uh, Ro uh, Rock City says, as far as Professor X and Wolvie, I think all that would be just a sort of farewell cameo. I think so too, but then who's going to take their place? That's my thing. I don't know if you want to have them come in and then leave. I or maybe you do. I don't know. How do you really How do you really introduce the X-Men then? I think it becomes convoluted. I don't know. Um, but I'm okay. Whatever. Uh, DC in the 50s was the only show in town. David Ross at that time. Yeah, I think you were right. Um... Where it just jumped again. Look at that. It dumped. It jumped again. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'll have to catch the replay. Prince Zodiac. How you doing, Prince Zodiac? Yeah, I started at 645, but go back and give it a watch. Some really nice Silver Age books today. I think you're really going to like what I had to show. Uh, this Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern on. And so, oh, thanks very much, Mike. Appreciate that. You're like my own moderator there. I appreciate that. Uh, Rock City definitely hit that like thumbs up 29 people watching and only 13 likes for shame yeah what the hell's that there's 29 people watching get on hit that like button smash that like button let's see if it, let's see if it actually works hit the like button I want to see if we can get to 29 that'd be nice thanks Rock City <laughs> Dennis Mason Canadian I don't, I don't have a Canadian accent do I do I have a Canadian accent love the vids man Jim thanks so much thanks for coming by appreciate that Rock City yeah Oshawa is in Canada <laughs> So hard to uh, gently press. Come on, Dennis. Press that damn button. Um, uh, Maria Alexander. Oh, nice. Well, definitely try to be there. Yes, Maria, come by. There should be some really nice books. Uh, by the way, raw books, graded books, the whole shebang. So come on out and don't be afraid to make an offer. Okay? Um, just because a price is there doesn't mean you can't make an offer. All right? Uh <laughs> definitely canadian uh luke if they are bring back daredevil maybe iron fist luke cage and kingpin not far behind i've been hearing kingpin potentially in the hawkeye series actually uh dennis arun a boot yeah i guess so <laughs> mike thanks kevin have fun at ghostbusters out i'm i plan on you too michael uh prince zodiac thanks very much have a good night guys uh i think they should make a dracula versus werewolf movie jim it's going to happen, brother. Don't you worry. Werewolf by night. Yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, EC and the other horror mags and mad were ragging. Cheers, Doc. See you Friday. Yes, Dark Horse. Thanks. See you very much. Gently press and clean that like button. That's a good one. I like that. Gently press and clean that like button. How many likes we got? Have? We got 17 likes. Give me 18. Somebody, please hit the like button. I want to see, I want to see how fast it takes to go to 18. I, got, I see 17 right now. Anybody, just hit the hit it. The like button. 17. We've got 27 people in here. Now we're down to 20. I scared somebody away. Sorry. Oh, come on. Just one. Ah. There's, there's a delay. It's probably going to come in a second anyways. I'll, I'll start bugging you. I'll stop bugging you. All right, guys. Prince Zodiac says, first thing I did was smash the like. Oh, someone did it. Thank you very much. Someone hit the number for giving me, got me to 18. Appreciate it. <laughs> First thing I did was smash the like. Good habits, people. Good habits. Thanks, Prince. Marco, wasn't Vincent D'Onofrio confirmed in Hawkeye? I didn't hear that. Uh, Jim, the like button is in the bot. Oh, up to 20. So I think Jim just found it. 
Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Female vampire, female werewolf. Oh, yes. Possibly. But just go and watch, uh, what do you call it, uh, with uh, Kate Beckinsale. Uh, Underworld. That's a good movie. I like Underworld. The first Underworld, good movie. And their their outfits are pretty nice, too. Anyways, guys, it's okay, Eddie. <laughs> I'm done. I surrender. I surrender. Guys, thank you very much again for coming by. Have a fantastic night. We'll see you again, hopefully, on Friday and again on Sunday for an unboxing. Until then, take care. See you soon. Bye for now.